cash. It's, you know, what will that mean to, to my investment? And the announcement with Fusion IO is that you know, we're 25 times faster on read intensive HBase applications, the combination. So as organizations are deploying Hadoop and they're looking at technology changes coming down the pike, um, they can rest assured that they'll be able to take advantage of those uh, in, in a much more aggressive fashion with MapR than, than other distributions. Jack, I, I got to ask you, we were talking last night at the uh, Hadoop uh, Summit, um, kind of the kickoff party, and you know, everyone was there, all the top execs were there, and, and all the developers. Um, you know, we were on theCUBE, I think, I think that either Dave or myself coined the term the big three of big data. You guys, ROMs, Cloudera, MapR, and uh, Hortonworks, really at the, at the beginning, the, the key players early on. And, um, Charles from uh, Cloudera was just recently on, and, and he's like, oh no, this enterprise grade stuff has been kicked around, it's been there from the beginning. You guys have been there from the beginning, yeah. And, yeah. and MapR um, has never ever waffled on your, on your messaging. You've always been very clear, hey, we're going to take a dupe, open source a dupe, and turn it into an enterprise grade product. Right? Correct. So that's clear, right? That's, yep. that's you, <laughs> that's agree. That's agree. So, what's your take on this? Because now, enterprise grade is kind of, uh, I guess, the buzz around getting the, the, the folks that have crossed the chasm implemented. So what, what, what can you comment on that about one, enterprise grade, the reality of it, um, certainly from your perspective you have opinion, but others. And then those folks that are now rolling it out for the first time, what can you share with them around what does it mean to be enterprise grade? So, so enterprise grade is more about the customer experience than, than a marketing claim. And uh, you know, by enterprise grade, what we're talking about are some of the, the capabilities and features that they've grown to expect in their, their other enterprise applications. So you know, the ability to meet full S, uh, SLAs, full HA, uh, recovery from multiple failures, uh, rolling upgrades, data protection with consistent snapshots, business continuity with mirroring, the ability to share a cluster across multiple groups and have you know, volumes. I mean, there's a, there's a host of features that fall under the umbrella enterprise grade. And when you move from no support for any of those features to support to a few of them, I don't think that's going to, to HA. It's more like moving to low availability. Uh, and, and there's just a, a lot of differences in terms of when we say enterprise grade, what those features mean versus um, what, what we view as kind of an incomplete story. So describe, what do you, what do you mean by low availability? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's tongue in cheek, it's nice, it's a good term, it's, that, it's really saying, you know, just available um, when you, sometimes. Uh, is that what you mean? Is it like, it's not true availability? I mean, availability is 99.9%. .9 right, you know. right, so if you've got a, an HA solution that can't recover from multiple failures, that's downtime. Uh, if you've got an HBase application that's running online, and uh, you have data that goes down and it takes 10 to 30 minutes to have the region servers recover it from another place in the distribution, that's downtime. Uh, if you have snapshots that aren't consistent across the cluster, that doesn't provide you know, data protection. There's no point in time recovery for, for a cluster. So you know, there's a lot of details underneath that, but what it, what it amounts to is do you have interruptions, do you have downtime, do you have the potential for losing data? And our answer is uh, you need a series of features that are hardened and, and proven to deliver that. And what about um, recoverability? You mentioned that. You guys have done a lot of work in that area with snapshotting. That's kind of being kicked around. Are our folks addressing, what are the comp what's your competition doing in those areas of uh, recoverability? You just mentioned availability. Okay, got that. Uh, recoverability, okay. security, compliance, and usability. Those are the areas that seem to be the hot focus areas. What's going on in the industry? How would you give them the grade, the letter grade, <laughs> if you will, um, candidly, compared to what you guys offer? Well, the, the, first of all, let's take recoverability. Um, you know, one of the tenants is you have a point in time recovery, the ability to restore to a previous point that's consistent across the cluster. And right now, there's, there's no point in time recovery for, uh, for HDFS, for the files, and there's no point in time recovery for uh, HBase tables. So there's snapshot support that's being talked about in the open source community uh, with respect to snapshots, but it's being referred to in the JIRAs as fuzzy snapshots and really compared to a copy table. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, Jack, I want to turn the conversation to the kind of the, the a topic we've talked about before, kind of the open versus uh, proprietary. Mm -hmm. That that whole debate. We've 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 heard about that. We've talked about that uh, before here on the cube. So, uh, just kind of reiterate for us your take. I mean, we we hear perhaps because of the show we're at. There's a lot of talk about the open sourced um, nature of Hadoop and some of the purists, as you might call them, are saying it's got to be open source 100%, uh, Apache compatible, et cetera, and then there's others that are taking a different approach. Explain your approach and, and why you think that's the key way to make, uh, to really spur adoption of Hadoop and make it well, an enterprise grade I mean, we, we're, we're a part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're, uh, we've got you know, commitment going on, we've you know, pioneered and, and pushed a Apache drill, mm -hmm. um, but we have done innovations as well, and I think that um, those innovations are really required to support and extend the, the whole ecosystem. So, um, Canonical distributes uh, our M3 di uh, distribution. Uh, we've got, you know, all our, our packages are, mm -hmm. are available on GitHub and in open source. So it's not, it's not a binary um, uh, d debate. And I think the, the point being that there's uh, companies that have jumped ahead and now the Peloton is is you know pedaling faster and and will will catch up, will streamline. I think the difference is we rearchitected, mm -hmm. so we're basically in a race car and um, you know are are racing ahead with with enterprise grade features that, that are required. And there's a lot of work that still needs to be do, needs to be accomplished before that full rearchitecture is is in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think uh, for me, the proof uh, is really in the pudding when, you, when it comes to talk about customers that are doing real things and real production grade, mission critical applications yep. that they're running. Um, and t to me, that shows the success or, or relative success of a, of a given approach. So uh, I know you guys are working with companies like Ancestry.com, uh, Live Nation, Quicken Loans. Maybe you could, could you walk us through a couple of those scenarios? Let's take Ancestry.com. Obviously, they've got a huge amount of data sure. based, based on the kind of genealogical information. What are you guys doing with them? Yeah, so they've got, I mean, <coughs> they've got the, the world's largest uh, family genealogy services available on the web. Uh, so there's a, a massive amount of data that they make accessible and, and uh, you know, ability for, for analysis. And then they've rolled out new features and new applications, one of which is to, uh, ship a kit out, have people spit in a tube, return back, and they do DNA matching, oh. and reveal uh, additional details. So really some really fabulous leading edge things that are being done with, with uh, the use of, of Hadoop. Interesting, so um, t talk about w when you went to, uh, to work with them, what were some of their key requirements? Um, was, it around, was it more around the enter enterprise grade security and uptime kind of uh, equation, or was it more around some of the analytics? Well, what's, what's the kind of the killer uh, use case for them? It's kind of a, it, you know, it's, it's hard with a specific um, company or even, you know, to generalize across companies because they're really three main areas in terms of ease of use and administration, mm -hmm. uh, dependability, which includes the full HA, and then, and then performance. And in some cases, it's, it's just one of those that kind of drives it and, and is used to justify. In other cases, it's kind of a collection. Mm -hmm. um, the ease of use is being able to, to use a cluster not only as Hadoop, but to access it and treat it like enterprise storage. So it's mm -hmm. a complete POSIX compliance file system underneath that allows the, the uh, mounting and access and updates and using it in dynamic read-write. Mm -hmm. So what that means from an application level, it's, it's faster, it's much easier to administer, and it's much easier and, and reliable for developers to, to utilize. Mm -hmm. Jack, I got to ask you about the marketing question because I see, you know, MapR, you guys have done a good job of uh, marketing. Certainly, we want to be thankful to you guys as uh, supporting the Cube in the past, and you guys have been great supporters of our mission. Um, but now the ecosystem's evolving, a lot more competition. Cloudera mentioned there's eight companies they're tracking in quote Hadoop, and certainly Jeff and I, and, and we're still going to look at it. There's a lot more because uh, Hadoop washing has been going on now for uh, the term Hadoop washing, I mean jumping in and doing Hadoop mm -hmm. and slapping that onto an existing solution. It's now been happening full, full, full bore for a year at least. What's the next for you guys to break above the noise? Obviously, the communities are, are very uh, active, projects are coming online. You guys have your mission in the enterprise. What's the strategy for you guys going forward? Is it more of the same? Anything new you can share? Yeah, I, I think as far as breaking above the noise, it will be our customers, their success and their use cases that really you know, put the spotlight on what the differences are in terms of 
of you know, using a big data platform. And I think what, what companies will start to realize is, I, I draw the analogy between supply chain and the big, the big revolution in supply chain was focusing on inventory at each stage in the supply chain and how do you reduce that inventory level and how do you speed the, the flow of goods and the agility of a company for competitive advantage. And I think we're going to view data the same way. So companies, instead of raw data that they're copying and moving across you know, different silos, if they're able to process data in place and send small result sets, they're going to be faster, more agile, and more competitive. And that puts the spotlight on what data platform is out there that can support a broad set of applications and can have the broadest set of functionality. So, you know, what we're delivering is a mission grade, you know, enterprise grade mission critical support platform that supports MapReduce and does that high performance, provides NFS, you know, POSIX access, so you can use it like a file system, integrates, you know, enterprise grade NoSQL applications, so now you can do, you know, high speed, consistent performance, real time operations in addition to batch, streaming, integrated search, et cetera. So it's, it's really exciting to provide that platform and have organizations transform what they're doing. How's the feedback going with Ted Dunning? I've been seeing a lot of buzz on the Twitter sphere. He's getting positive feedback here. He's a, uh, a tech athlete, he's a guru, he's an expert. He's got his hands in all the pies. He's a scientist type. Um, what's he up to? What's his, uh, you know, what's his role within MapR? And he's obviously playing in the open source community. What's yeah. he up to these days? He's, he's our chief application architect. He's on the leading edge of, of Mahout, so machine learning. Uh, so, uh, you know, sharing insights there. He was uh, speaking at the Storm Meetup uh, two nights ago and sharing how you can integrate long running batch predictive analytics with real time streaming and how the use of snapshots uh, really makes that, that easy and, and possible. Um, he travels the world and is, is helping organizations understand how they can take some very complex, long-running processes and really simplify and shorten those. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to meet him in New York City at last Hadoop World uh, at, a, at a, uh, a party and great guy, fantastic uh, geek and you know, <laughs> certainly he's doing great work and a shout out to Ted, congratulations, continue up that support. Um, How's everyone else doing? How's uh, John and Trevis doing? How's the team at MapR? Uh, we're we're busy, as fast as you can. Growing, <laughs> growing quickly. Uh, no, we're just shifting gears. We're, we're beyond pedaling. Yeah, you're in <laughs> the engine. You know, cool. yeah, give, give us an update on the company in terms of how the growth and uh, kind of where you guys are moving next. Yeah, we're we're expanding worldwide. Uh, you know, just this uh, you know last few months, we've opened up offices in in London and Munich. Uh, in Paris, um, we're expanding in Asia, uh, Japan and, and Korea. Um, so our, our sales and services and engineering and basically across the whole company continues to expand rapidly. Um, some really great, interesting partnerships and, um, and a lot of growth, not only as we add customers, but it's, it's nice to see customers that continue to, to really grow their use of MapR within their organization, both in terms of the amount of data that they're analyzing and the number of applications that they're bringing to bear on the platform. Talk about that a little bit, because I think you know, one, of the, one of the trends we do see is when a company brings in big data, a big data platform, they might start experimenting, experimenting with it, build an application, and then maybe in, the, maybe in the marketing department, and then the sales guys see it, and they say, well, maybe we can do something with that. How, how, is that typically the kind of the experience you're seeing? And, and how do you support companies that want to start expanding beyond those initial use cases to support other departments, uh, potentially even other uh, you know, physical locations around the world? Yeah. How, do you, how do you kind of well, the, support the, that? The beauty of that is if you have a platform that can support those new applications, so if you know, mission critical uh, workloads are not an issue, if you support volume so that you can logically separate, makes it much easier, which we have, um, so one of our customers, Zions Bank, um, they brought in MapR to do fraud detection, and pretty soon the fact that they were able to collect all of that data, they had other departments coming to them and saying, well, hey, we'd like to <laughs> use that to do analysis on because we're not getting that data yeah. from our existing systems. Yeah, they come in there, you're sitting on a gold mine there for, <laughs> exactly. for the, some of our use cases. Um, you also mentioned kind of as you're expanding internationally, what is your take on the international market uh, for big data to do specifically? Um, are, are, is, is the U.S. kind of uh, leaps and bounds ahead of uh, the rest of the world in terms of adoption of the technology? What are you seeing out there in terms of uh, where, where the rest of the world I, I, I wouldn't say leaps and bounds. Um, 
And I think uh, internationally they're able to maybe skip uh, some of the experimental mm -hmm. steps. Um, so we're seeing, we're seeing deployment across financial services and mm -hmm. telecom and um, geez, it's, it's fairly broad recruit uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. They're uh, the largest provider of uh, recruiting services. Indeed.com is one of their subsidiaries. Uh, they're doing a lot with, with Hadoop and MapR specifically. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it, <laughs> It, it's been it's been expanding rapidly. Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, also, you know, when you think about Europe, with what's going on with Google and some of the uh, the, the privacy concerns, and even here, I should say, um, is there are there different regulatory environments you've got to navigate when you're talking about data and how you use data when you're starting to expand to other other locales? Yeah, there's um, typically by vertical. There's different uh, okay. you know different requirements, uh, HIPAA and healthcare mm -hmm. and Basel II and financial services, and so all of those and it. it it, it basically, it's the same theme of when you're bringing Hadoop into an organization and into a data center, the same sorts of concerns and requirements and, and privacy that you're applying in mm -hmm. other areas will be applied on Hadoop. Mm -hmm. um, now, kind of turning back to the technology, you mentioned Apache Drill. I'd love to get an update on uh, kind of where, where that stands. Um, you know, it's put, and put that into context for people. We hear a lot about yeah. the SQL on Hadoop question here. Um, where does Drill fit into that into that equation? Well, the the you know there's a lot of different um, approaches to provide SQL access. Uh, a lot of that is driven by how do you um, how do you leverage some of the talent in organization that you know speak SQL. Uh, so there's developments with respect to Hive. You know there's other projects out there. Apache Drill is an open source project, <coughs> getting a lot of community involvement and. The design center there is pretty interesting. It started from the beginning as an open source project. Uh, and two main uh, differences. One was, in looking at supporting SQL, it's let's do full ANSI SQL. So mm -hmm. it's full 2003 ANSI SQL, not a SQL-like. And that'll support the greatest number of applications and you know, avoid a lot of support and, and uh, uh, issues. And the second design center is let's support a broad set of data sources. So uh, nested uh, sources like JSON, Schema on Discovery, it's basically fitting it into an enterprise environment which sometimes is kind of messy and can get messy as acquisitions happen, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's complementary. it's about you know, enabling interactive low latency queries. Mm -hmm. Jack, I want to give you the final word. We're out on, on of time. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Great to see you again, uh, CUBE alumni. But final word, and we'll end the segment here uh, on theCUBE, is your quick thoughts on what's happening here at Hadoop World. What is this show about? Share with the audience what's the vibe, the summary, quick sound bite on Hadoop. Yeah, I, th I, I think I'll go back to how we started. It's not if you use Hadoop, it's how you use Hadoop. And you know, look at not only you know, the first application, but what it's going to look like in multiple applications, and pay attention to what enterprise grade means. <laughs> okay, there was the cube. We got uh, more coverage coming. Uh, Jack Norris with MapR, obviously one of the big three, original big three still on the, on the list in our mind, and the market's mind with a unique approach to Hadoop, and they've been doing great. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break.